Okay, let's begin. So uh, we are studying number systems. Yesterday we saw what are natural numbers, like the set of natural numbers. Its existence is guaranteed by the axiom of infinity. And well, this was also a question around hundred years ago. Yeah, people wanted to formalize mathematics. And well, while preparing for this class, I just came across this video. Yeah, there is a 379 page long proof of 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Yeah, I mean, what if you are finding my yesterday's lecture ridiculous, then I don't know, you will die laughing <laughs> when you uh, see this. Okay, so uh, why are these things important? Because human beings want to formalize things. They want to reason about things without really knowing what things are. Yeah, things are black boxes and you want to reason and therefore logic is the most appropriate language for talking about things. So uh, we, we saw yesterday what is principle of recursion. Yeah, it's a theorem which allows you to define functions on the entirety of omega, which is the set of natural numbers. And we also saw the distinction between omega and n. Yeah? n with one extra line, so do not forget that extra line, otherwise it is just some capital N English language letter, it does not mean anything. Okay, so uh, let us move ahead and we want to construct, yeah, I mean the 0th stage was of course natural numbers. Zero stage is natural numbers, so uh, the notations are I mean n, then somebody asked me yesterday what this blank was. So this blank is just the placeholder for an argument. So blank plus the shift operator, then the addition as an operation from n cross n to n and multiplication as an operation from n cross n to n. Yes, and we also saw exponentiation. Now we want to extend it in stage 1 to integers. So yesterday I pointed out that in natural numbers subtraction cannot be done or rather subtraction uh, is only partially defined. If you want to subtract 2 from 3, you can do it, but you cannot subtract 3 from 2. Yeah, so it is a restricted operation, so we want to allow ourselves to have negative integers and sub subtraction also. So any ideas on how to do this, achieve this from natural numbers? What were you told in school? How do you motivate natural numbers? Or you do not remember, you are too young. Yeah, it has been a, an integral part of your understanding that natural numbers exist, imaginary numbers exist. Yes, somebody? Like counting numbers. Counting numbers, so what is minus 1? Can you count minus 1? No, I will count natural numbers. Yeah, that is okay, but for integers, what is the motivation? Okay, you are thinking actually, that is good. We, we get to? If we, go left, if we go left of the number line, yes. Then we get negative numbers. Uh, when you are answering this, then you are assuming that you know what the number line is. Yes, in school. Yes, number line is, yeah, we do not really know what the number line is. Yeah, you, you know we are facing problems and we are asking questions for everything. Yes. So proper loss in business. Proper? Profit loss in business, okay, yeah, that is a good motivation, yeah, we want to be able to sub subtract things, yeah, and therefore we create these new symbols, yeah, minus 1 is simply a new symbol which when added to 1 will give us 0. However, now, now that we are learning set theory, we should formalize this process and so, so consider n cross n, 
we are going to cheat okay we only know how to add and we are going to use addition to describe subtraction okay so consider n cross n yeah this is the collection of natural numbers ordered pairs of natural numbers okay and define a relation tilde on this set well what is this tilde relation so we say for a comma b in n cross n uh, well a comma b and c comma d these are two ordered pairs say a comma b is related to c comma d if a plus d is equal to b plus c so let us assume that we have proven that addition is commutative and associative and everything using mathematical induction yeah hopefully all of you know mathematical induction yes so now observe this a plus ab is related to cd if a plus d is equal to b plus c so in particular a minus b is equal to c minus d so this pair is supposed to represent the difference between those two numbers yeah a comma b is a minus b it is meant to represent that but as we know 1 comma 2 which is minus 1 is also same as 2 comma 3 so therefore we should have an equivalence class of all such things so i am just going to write this clearly or prove that tilde is an equivalence relation yeah hopefully you can do that without any problems reflexivity symmetry and transitivity okay so tilde is an equivalence relation and then define z to be equal to the set of equivalence classes of ordered pairs of natural numbers with respect to this relation yeah so these are precisely the integers yes you have something to say sorry it is the set of equivalence classes oh you want more explanation i can write it yeah so that is also equal to so i take the ab and the tilde equivalence class such that a comma b is like this well do you want some primer on this so suppose um yeah i mean i'm going to write it in a different color if e is an equivalence relation on a set a then for a in a this class yeah uh, maybe i can use this also yeah uh, to make it more precise i can write square brackets over here this is the collection of all those b's in a such that a e b a is related to b yeah and a modulo e is defined to be the collection of all such equivalence classes of elements of a these equivalence classes are precisely they, they will form a partition of your set yeah all of you know this yesterday i asked you for this specific reason if you know this yeah so uh, just make sure you write this square brackets around these ordered pairs over here 
okay what is a e b it is a binary relation a is related to b via e yeah just like we wrote this you never objected to this a comma b is related to c comma d when tilde was replaced with e then it means the same thing yeah it's a relation so all of you are okay with this definition of integers yeah we started with pairs of natural numbers and we defined their difference the intended meaning is the difference and this will be our new integer what will be zero in this case 0 comma 0 or 1 comma 1 or 2 comma 2 anything all of them will be equivalent so that will be our 0 yeah so uh, let us write that down so in z 0 is the class of a comma a then minus yeah this is precisely what we wanted to do minus of the equivalence class of a b is defined to be then what is the sum What is the sum? Coordinate wise sum. Coordinate wise sum, correct. A plus C, B plus D. What is product? You multiply A minus B and C minus D. What do you get? In the positive part, you have AC plus BD, very good. And in the negative part, AD plus BC. So it is, these are all the equivalence classes. Yeah, exponentiation, I'm not going to do. You do it on your own. Because the exponentiation is only defined for natural powers not minus powers yeah the values won't lie here so let's just be content with this definition so in algebra you will study rings yeah so we have described the ring structure here we have zero we have also have one one is the class of one comma zero it is uh, then we have subtraction we have addition and we have multiplication so this is the ring structure of integers Whereas natural numbers are called semi-rings. Yeah, they have only half of the ring structure. They don't have subtraction. They don't have division. Yeah, so only half of it. Okay, so now that we have defined integers, we can also go ahead and define rationals. So how are rational numbers defined? Now, can you use the same idea? Yes. Yes. Like we can define a relation from. Uh, relation from, yes. Relation from or relation on? On Z cross Z. On Z cross Z. Do we want Z cross Z entirely? What is the intended interpretation of a pair? P by Q. So, can we divide by every integer? No. no. Right. So, you have to s remove. Yes. We have to remove 0 and then AD equal to BC. And maybe we can also say that the denominator just happens to be positive. We don't really need negative denominators because minus P by Q is same as p by minus q so uh, yeah so define double tilde on yeah i'm just going to define this uh, on z cross 
z plus yeah z plus is all positive integers as a comma b double related to c comma d if a d is equal to b c yeah this is our multiplication and then you can write write down the rest of the things yeah i don't want to do it you can add you can subtract you can have zero you have one you have multiplication you have division everything can be done right so english i did not assume so how will that we can okay if you wish you can also do it with z cross z minus 0 and do the same thing it's not going to change the answer the equivalence classes the set of equivalence classes will still be in bijection yeah i mean i'm just going to write this yeah uh, can also use z cross z minus 0 and define the same equivalence relation everything will work out properly okay so these are your rational numbers okay what what comes after rational numbers yeah, irrational no i mean irrational are irrational have a negative definition yeah whenever you use some adjective like ir yeah that means not rational but not rational where real, real numbers so how do you define real numbers using the uh, density the lub density okay yeah density property yes can we do it slightly differently maybe yeah that's uh, cauchy completion is one of the ways yeah all of you know what is a cauchy sequence yes cauchy sequences can be cauchy sequences of real numbers can be defined and cauchy sequences are convergent in real numbers and so you can formalize that part or you can do it via density uh, like completion yeah just completion order theoretic completion of rational numbers that can also be done or i mean yeah so one more thing you can define on rational numbers and integers is what is the order right you can also compare two rational numbers to integers yes okay so what other way of uh, defining or using real numbers do you know how do you express a real number decimal, decimal expansions very good so uh, can we formalize decimal expansions terminating non terminating i mean we can also uh, say that everything is non terminating yeah if it is terminating then you just pad it with zeros eventually so real numbers yeah for real numbers uh, what do we need every real number has some integer part and then some decimal expansion part right you write n dot a1 a2 a3 and dot 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 so what is this a1 a2 a3 dot 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 decimal expansion, decimal expansion. Yeah. so that means you are choosing a function from from what from naturals yeah not from 0 to 9 0 to 9 is the codomain and from natural numbers to 0 to 9 okay so this part is a function from natural numbers i mean okay maybe uh, for natural numbers i should okay it's not rubbing
I will use a0, a1, a2 and dot 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 a function from omega to, to 9. Yeah, which in our language is precisely the set 10, right. Okay, so this is a function and this is one element from integers. n is, yeah, n simply belongs to integers. So now, what do we know? So we have to take z cross functions from omega to 10 okay are all real numbers mentioned here are there more real numbers than this collection or are there less real numbers than this collection definitely not less because every real number does have a decimal expansion but can the same real number have more than one decimal expansion yes, yes. what are such numbers 0 0.9, bar. 0.9 bar yes correct so we have to quotient out this by another equivalence relation yeah, uh, so this is uh, our set of real numbers where, okay, how do you describe anything, yeah, so uh, n comma a0, a1, a2 up to a n and then 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, okay. So this is equivalent to, what do you do? Uh, I mean you have to add 1, yeah. Let us not try to make this precise, but uh, n dot a0, a1 up to a n plus 0 dot 0, 0, 1, yeah, where this 1 is at the nth position, this is at the 0th position and so on. So you add this and then the rest of, oh, I mean I should uh, have written perhaps I should erase this part I should say something about zeros yeah and plus 0 0.00 up to 1 yeah this is also 0 this is at the nth position and whatever number you obtain here so there is also one equivalence relation by which we have to quotient out and then the rest of rest will be taken care of yes thank you yeah whatever this addition means addition is always point wise and uh, but we have to also carry one if necessary Okay, okay, good, good observation. So where uh, and a n is not equal to nine, so we can change that. But I'm still not going to do it. If it's a negative number, then what do you do? Yeah. So let's let's keep it as it is. But yes, his a. Uh, understanding is correct a n is not equal to 9 because we started saying 999 9, 9 after nth stage right so this is the only equivalence relation yeah of course we know that 0.999999 is same as 1 yeah so that's precisely what we have written down and these are real numbers and so far so good because we have never used anything more than what we know we have only used sets 
and natural numbers to begin with and we have used equivalence relations which are set theoretic constructs. Right? So, again addition of real numbers etc. My, my uh, purpose is not to teach you basic high school mathematics again but just to make you think about how you can arrive at something like this formally. Okay, you can compare real numbers, you can add, you can subtract, you can multiply, you can divide by a non-zero real number. So, it's a field. Yeah, you are also learning linear algebra. So, this is real numbers form a field. So, do rational numbers. They in fact form, both of them form ordered fields. Yeah, there is also an order relation which behaves nicely with respect to the algebra structure. Right? So, this is our uh, end of story for number systems. You know how to construct complex numbers. Yeah? Complex numbers are also pairs, pairs of real numbers, yeah? ordered pairs of real numbers so, and you know how to add and subtract. So, everything just works nicely and now we can uh, start asking some good questions. So, for example, what is the size of integers? Can you list all integers? Listing means finding out the first one, then second one, then third one and so on. Can you list all the integers? Yes or no? Hmm? Not sure? Okay, now I should add a page over here, yes, okay. So, well, now when I am talking about integers, I will use positive and negative symbols. Can we list all integers? I can start at 0, then I can say 1 minus 1, 2, minus 2 and dot dot dot. Now, by principle of recursion, we can actually complete this sequence and that will define a bijection between omega and natural number uh, uh, and integers. Yeah. So, therefore, yes and this is the answer, use recursion. To define this function. So, therefore, what we have concluded is that omega is equinumerous with integers. What can you say about rational numbers? Can you list all rational numbers? Yes? How? It can be written as p by q, correct? Uh, what is the meaning of similar? How? Like, uh, we uh, establish a bijection, right? Uh -huh. uh, so, it is like 1 and minus 1. In, uh -huh. that, in that case, if for rationals, we can define it as like some uh, x1 by x2 and so on, we can just call it Yeah, but can you try to formalize your argument? We want to, so, uh, look at what are rationals. Rationals are defined on z cross z plus or z cross z minus 0. Now, even if we can show that all the elements of z cross z can be listed, then we are done. Yeah? Because then these are quotients. So, they will be countable. Well, that will only show they are countable. It does not show that they are countably infinite. Understood? For proving countability, what do you need to show? Okay, so let me write this down. A set A is countable if 
there exists an injection or equivalently this is same thing or there is a surjection. from omega to a yeah take this as a homework problem yeah these two are equivalent conditions and the set is countably infinite if if there exists a bijection h from a to omega. Now, what method do we have of proving bijections like existence of bijections? cantor schroeder bernstein theorem, right? CSB theorem. So, uh, clearly, so clearly, natural numbers embeds inside rational numbers correct rationals are denoted with q symbol q so you only need to show that there also exists right and actually i mean uh, maybe i should write this down so z cross z minus 0 if that's the notation we are using then from here to here there is a surjection yeah that's how we constructed rational numbers so we should be able to so it is enough to prove that z cross z is i mean z cross z or z cross z minus 0 equivalently is countably infinite so we'll simply prove this yes that is the inclusion symbol so injective functions are denoted with an arrow with a tail whereas inclusion is denoted it's a subset yeah, omega can be identified with a subset of ra uh, rational numbers. Yeah, so this is a symbol for inclusion. Okay, so actually, instead of proving this particular thing that z cross z is countably infinite, we will prove that product of two countable sets is countable. Okay, so if A and B are countable or are respectively countably infinite. Then so is A cross B. Okay, so product of two countable sets is countable if one of them happens to be like if both are non-empty and one of them is countably infinite then the result will also be countably infinite. Okay, how do we do this? Well, in this case we always have bijections. We have bijections f from a to omega and g from b to omega. So basically, so what is a bijection? Bijection is simply renaming. Yeah, I take the class of the students and I replace them with their roll numbers. It's one to one correspondence. Yeah, it's renaming. So therefore, by default, it would be, uh, oh, I mean, I'm just doing it for, uh, 
countably infinite, but countable argument is also similar. So, uh, it is enough to do it for omega cross omega. And I am not going to give you a formal proof or anything. You can convert this diagram into a sequence. So, let us list. Uh, all elements of omega cross omega as follows. So, what uh, the first element is 0 comma 0, then 0 comma 1, 0 comma 2 and dot dot dot. Then here I am writing 1 comma 0, 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2 dot 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 2 comma 0 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 and now this is just child's play i will take color green and i will start from here this zigzag this zigzag actually defines a list of all the elements. Every element lies on some diagonal, so it will be covered at some point. Yeah, converting it into a bijection is not hard. Explicit bijection. Yeah, if you wish, you can invest your time and find out the formula for this bijection. But it is not necessary, is it? You understand listing is saying that this is my first element, second element, third element and so on. Okay. So, product of two countable sets is countable. You can use the same argument. Yeah, I mean I just did it for infinity, but you do not need to. What about union? Union of two countably infinite sets or two countable sets. Will that still be countable? Yeah, how? Yes, yes. So, uh, if those two sets are disjoint or we can assume they are disjoint by default, yeah, then uh, unions, disjoint unions of countably infinite sets will again be countably infinite. It, it is same thing that we did for integers also, right? All the odd integers were uh, were positive, and the even integers were non-negative, right? It was zero, one, minus one, mi two, minus two, and so on. So for two, you can use this idea. What about finitely many countably infinite sets? Yes, so we can use the congruence classes, congruence classes of natural numbers like modulo n, if there are n many countably infinite sets, well I will just note it down, yeah, uh, for if a1, a2, a n are countably countably infinite or countable, yeah, you can write down the other version, then so is the disjoint union of A i. Okay. Yeah, use, use bijections. of A i or A j with the congruence class well m n plus j minus 1 yeah, such that m uh, 
belongs to integers. I can also do it with integers. Yeah, integers we have already proven to be countably infinite. So I can establish this. Yes. So what, is the what is the congruence class? This is precisely the congruence class. So the congruence class modulo n of 0 is 0 n 2 n minus n minus 2 n all of them. Then congruence class of 1 is 1 n plus 1 2 n plus 1 and so on. Yeah, so these are the congruence classes. Yeah, this is modular arithmetic. Okay, so you can do this. So use bijections of this and then the disjoint union will be precisely integers and integers are in bijection with natural numbers. So everything works properly. Any questions? This one. So this is precisely, I mean I can list all the elements. This is j minus 1, then n plus j minus 1 then n plus uh, 2 n plus j minus 1 and dot 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 here uh, here it is minus n plus j minus 1 minus 2 n plus j minus 1 and dot 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 so this set how are we using this okay this set is infinite yes so uh, it is countably infinite in particular so aj is countable, countably infinite. So therefore, there exists a bijection between aj and omega. Yeah, by definition, there exists a bijection with omega. Omega is in bijection with integers, and integers are in bijection with this. Yeah, so tra by transitivity of equinumerary. Uh, numerosity relation. Yeah, we can get this. Okay, maybe I should write it down if you have questions. So, uh, Aj is equinumerous with omega, yeah, by definition. Then omega is equinumerous with z, we have shown, and z is equinumerous with the part below it, that is clear, yeah, that is just via m. Any questions? Okay, so perhaps to end this session, we should push our boundaries and ask can we make this result better? Yes, so countably infinite sets, but a family. A countably infinite family of countably infinite sets, if we are given that, then is there is the union of this family again countably <laughs> infinite? Yes? Anybody else? Yes or no? Maybe I should write down the question. Yeah? Suppose A0, A1 and dot 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 is a sequence of countably infinite sets. Then union of a i, i in omega is countably infinite yes, so two people have said yes so far. What is your argument? each a i, uh, identify each a i with omega cross omega. All of them together with omega cross omega. Like take like a row in that. So there exists a function perhaps, yeah. yeah. So uh, they are saying yes. So choose a function
f0 f i from a i to omega. Yeah, I mean choose a bijective function for each i. Then list all the elements, right? We can list all the elements. What, what will be the first element? So the first, first row would be uh, F0 inverse of 0. That would be the first element. Then F0 inverse of 1 then f0 inverse of 2 and dot dot dot. In the second row, we will write f1 inverse of 0, f1 inverse of 1, f1 inverse of 2 and dot dot dot. And then what argument will you use? The zigzag argument. However, yeah, there is a catch. This is not yet done. There is something that I have written that warrants question. So what did we say in the first line? Choose a function, choose a function fi. Yeah, choosing one function is not a problem at all. But choosing infinitely many functions at the same time is a problem. And perhaps you can smell what's coming. Axiom of choice. We only need a specific version of that. And that's axiom of countable choice. Yeah. So this is only possible. So the answer is yes, assuming axiom of countable choice. Yeah. So A C the omega. It is the axiom of countable choice. Well, literally, axiom of countable choice just says that you can make countably infinitely many choices at the same time. Well, you might ask why, but we are going to do an entire lecture on axiom of choice and its equivalents. Okay, so this is for some other time. We don't want to do it just yet. Yeah, so. The proof of this works like this result is true only if you assume axiom of choice or a weaker version of that. If you do not assume axiom of choice, then the result is not true. It seems something quite obvious, yeah? This argument always works, but that argument involves something which, which is very strong. And it is not just strong, like the, its strength is not the problem. Yeah? The, the problem with axiom of choice is that the, it is a statement which can neither be proven nor be disproven. Okay? That's the beauty of this statement. So, uh, it can be shown that axiom of choice can neither be proven nor be disproven. Okay? It takes time to understand and appreciate this particular statement. Yeah? Th therefore, uh, it's quite a controversial statement, but we'll talk more about it. They, so, Paul Cohen won a Fields Medal for showing this. Yeah, that there, there are statements which can neither be proven nor be disproven. They are independent of all the other axioms. Okay? We will talk about it in later future because you need to be more mathematically matured before that. Okay, so, uh, we will stop here for today.